You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Shelter. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that uh, our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. All that for as little as $5, y'all. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up. Ooh, excuse me, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> the dog takes the sausage off the fire and brings it closer to his muzzle to sniff it. A bit of drool drips from the side of his muzzle. He wags his tail and puts the sausage back over the flames to continue roasting. Morzebrook is the closest town to shelter, roughly half a day walking distance from here. It's a place we use for trading with the rest of the world. I haven't been there in a while, but I know that but I know that it's been rapidly growing due to our activity here at shelter. Apparently a lot of people come to trade or, or live in Morzebrook now. When I first came here, this part of the country was considered a frozen shithole, but now it's a frontier for all those looking for wealth and excitement. Who would have thought? The South, huh? It would be so nice to be there this time of year. Sometimes I miss the warmth, you know? Huh, I, but it's warm here. Yeah, but it's only in, but only inside shelter. You know what I mean. I miss the warmth of the sun, the greener of the forests and meadows. Here we only have the choice between the warm and the safe shelter or the ever cold out there or the ever cold outside. I miss nature sometimes. Do you wanna go south? Huh? What? No, never, that's not what I meant. Shelter's our home now. I'm not gonna leave you here on your own. His friend wagged his tail. He looked like he was deep in thought. You know, Burry from the tavern uses fresh ingredients in his cooking. That means that there must be a way to grow plants here. Oh yeah, now that you mention that, that's true. So, if Shelter can provide so many things for us, I wouldn't be surprised if they found a way to add some greenery around here someday too. That would be wonderful! Could you imagine all the trees to mark? And real grass to, and real grass to nap on! They keep discovering new things every day, so I'm sure something like that may be possible too. Aw, oh, now both of them wag. I feel a bit sorry knowing that they pro that, that probably won't be possible. We have a greenhouse, but that's the only place that supports vegetation here. But who knows? Part of living in shelter is constant discovery of the unexpected. Shelter is a place of so many blessings, isn't it? Yeah, no greater blessing than the warmth. We take it for granted here, but I always get a renewed appreciation for it every time I freeze my butt out, my butt outside. True, true. Seriously though, how is it even possible? How much wood would it take to keep something so so huge so warm all the time? This place is bigger than any castle I've seen, but it's as warm and cozy as a little cabin in the woods. Shelter doesn't burn wood. Huh? What does it do? Do you know? The Lindhound dog nods, while staring at the bright burning wood of the campfire. When you first came here, do you remember feeling sick and weak? I do! Well, what was that about? All that people told me was that it eventually would pass. And it did. I forgot that it ever was a thing. You don't dabble in magic, so I'm not surprised that you didn't notice. But everyone who does knows that Shelter constantly siphons mana out of the air. This is how the place stays warm. Huh? It's pretty much like the relics we found around here. It burns mana to fuel its, me its mechanisms. Except for Shelter, everyone here is a source of mana. That's a pretty accurate explanation. I'm surprised that there are still dogs who live here but don't know that. No way! This is the first time I heard about it. Th this is... Don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. Once you get used to it, it doesn't hurt you. When a newcomer arrives at shelter, his body isn't used to this environment and he gets sick. But over time, the body learns to limit the amount of mana it releases, and at that point, you're safe. I see. The, Lund the, Lundhound, the Lundhound takes the sausage away from the heat again and brings it close to his mouth. He alternates between blowing at it and gulping in hunger. The sausage looks thick and deli delicious and perfectly roasted. A drop of fat drips down the wooden stick. Hmm. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? The whole mana siphoning thing? The boo, the boo hun dog sighs and looks at the giant statue while scratching his head. Um... Uh, no, not really. I never even knew that was the case and it didn't hurt me. It doesn't hurt anyone and yet it blesses us with a comfortable life here. That's a pretty good deal. You know, it even makes me proud that I contribute to that. All that mana that would otherwise go to waste instead brings warmth to every canine here. That's exactly what Skies Ablaze is about. We celebrate our contribution to the pack, to shelter! The Lundhun finishes blowing at his sausage. He leans towards his friend and offers it to him. Here, this one's for you! What? You didn't even take a bite! I wasn't roasting it for myself, I'm saving them for tonight! But I really wanted you to try one, try one now. They're so good! Ah. Are you sure you don't want it? 
Yeah, don't worry, I'm not even that hungry right now. He smiles, and the moment he does, half a cup worth of drool escapes from the corners of his mouth. He tries to cover it with his knee. Diluna doesn't even break eye contact. He just waits for his boo for his boo hunt bun to take the to take the roasted sausage offered to him. Like you know, water time. All right. You idiot! The boo hunt takes the sausage takes the roasted sausage off the stick, and the loo and the loon hunt wags his tail. The dog breaks the sausage in half in his hands. Catch! He tosses one half the sausage up in the air, and like driven by instinct, the loon hunt lunches. Lunches forward and catches it in his maw. The loon hunt blinks in confusion and sits back down, embarrassed. His mouth is full of sausage. Come on, chew it! It's so obvious you're hungry! B -b but I... And don't you try blowing that selflessness crap on me! I hate that! Do you really think I could enjoy this sausage knowing that my friend is starving for one too? No, I couldn't. There's no point in skies ablaze to me if we don't have fun equally. Both of us. So, come on! If you want me to take a bite, you have to take one too. Otherwise, you have to choose to starve yourself. If you choose to starve yourself, then I would rather starve together with you than be the only one eating. He smiles and wags his tail. Then he finally takes a bite of the sausage himself. He's such a good friend. Damn! This really is delicious! The best sausage I've ever had, no joke! Right? I changed my mind. Give me the other half, too. Spit it out! The Lunan swallows his half chewed his half his chewed half in a hurry and sticks out his tongue at his friend. Too late! You have to wait for the evening now. That was just a sample. Ah, you tease. Both the dogs laugh and wag their tails. They continue talking about some random things, but I can't but I can't hear them anymore because another loud group of dogs marches through the corridor. It's very upl uplifting to see the dogs being so happy and excited today. Watching new friendships blooming is so nice. It's like there's a custom of sharing little gifts between the dogs on Skies Ablaze now. Teak had a bunch of them for everyone earlier. I wonder if I had anything to give to Burry. What would that be? Is there anything that I, that I myself would want? Anyway, I finish wiping the foot of the metal guardian and throw the soaked rag back into the bucket. I should do it for now. It looks dry enough to me, but I probably only help the stupid mutt spread the mark further all around the foot. I'm gonna come back here later to clean it properly. I stand up and look at the blank face of the giant guardian. It looks like the dogs made him a pair of fake ears and fake ears this month too. Thank you for letting us stay at your home. Please keep us safe, and I will continue to care of. Uh, care. I'll continue to take care of shelter in your place. Like the Guardians. To me, they're like the closest link between us and the Ancients we have. Speaking, or even looking at them, always fills me with that feeling of indescribable awe. I put my hand on the giant's cold, smooth shin and smile. I take it off in a hurry when I remember that my hand is still dirty with piss. Sorry! I'll come back later and give you a proper wash. I know for sure that a, I know for sure that a one by one solution of water and white vinegar works great against dog piss. I have to hurry to the turret control tower for now. Please grant me success tonight, too. I dive between the Guardian's legs again and hide the bucket back in the corner. Then I hurry Then I hurry towards the turret's control room. I catch a quick glance at the Boo Hunt and the Loon Hunt by the campfire. They munch on some dried fruit now. Looks like they fill their stomachs with that in their, in their wait for the evening feasts. Hang in there, buds, just a little bit longer. Your sausage time is coming soon. Hey, hey, hey. All right, y'all. One second. Water time. We don't really know how shelter works. All the knowledge we have is just the tip of the iceberg. Barely enough to keep it running. Every day is a struggle against everything that we still don't understand, and the only way for us to learn is by trial and error. It was easier when there were just a few of us. Now any failure means putting in danger hundreds of dogs living here. We have to be careful and diligent. We learned about Shelter's function to siphon and burn mana ever since the first time we, me and Burry came here. That was how we were able to open the doors and explore the inside. Oh, that's a really cool looking area. At the time, barely anything was in working order. For the first for the first year or so, we didn't even we didn't even know that it we didn't even know that it had its own heating system. We kept campfires for warmth. Eventually, we got many of the new systems running again: the heating, lights, ventilation, water pumps, and filters. This place is all of that and so much more, like a complex organism. At first, there weren't enough of us to provide all the energy we needed. The change as more and more people came here. The more of us settled in shelter, the warmer it got here. Not only that, but it also kept us safe and invisible to the monsters. Mana attracts monsters. Bigger gatherings of people are always at more risk of being the targets of regular monster attacks, so by all means, we should be in danger, too. However, 
As long as shelter works, it traps any mana produced inside it, and it doesn't allow any of that to spread across the Frostlands for monsters to pick up. It lets us live here peacefully. For as weird as shelter is, in some ways it's the safest place in the world. Unfortunately, our growing population eventually became an issue. We reached the point when we, when we produced more mana than shelter could utilize at the time. That caused it to shut down. I'm certain that shelter was built to host many, many more, many more people than we had than we had at the time. Even the number of dogs we have today is insignificant compared to the size of this whole place. There's definitely an important element in the system that I'm missing or have aligned wrong. By design, shelter should sustain its work in conditions like these, not shut down. But as I said, we don't really know how shelter works. When we turned shelter back on again, we tried to find workarounds. We turned on all the systems we found in working order, even when they weren't needed. Anything to burn more mana. Even that wasn't enough. More people came, and one day another shutdown happened. That was disheartening. We started to consider limiting the number of dogs in shelter to keep it sustainable. I didn't like that. Nobody did. It was against our philosophy. And when we were at our wit's end and ready to give in, the ancients blessed us with an unexpected gift. I finally reached my destination, a room cluttered with screens and cables. It looks exactly like how like I, like I left it. Nobody comes here but me. It's way too dangerous to let any of the dogs touch any buttons here. Even the ancients deemed it too important to grant access here to just anyone. The door to this room opens only for the holders of a specific type of keycard. Luckily, I have one in my possession. One of the dogs found it and brought it to me around the time we were desperately looking for a solution to the mana overload problem. The card unlocked one of the towers on top of the shelter for us. It was riddled with many rooms with screens and complicated heavy machinery. Once we got in, we put all the systems online right away and left them running while we investigated every nook and cranny in the newfound rooms. To our joy, the machinery here sucked up large quantities of mana. For a long time, we were oblivious to where all that mana was going, but we were still happy. When we found out that it was powering one of the shelter's turrets once I fired it by accident and destroyed a large chunk of a nearby mountain. The dogs howled in joy and found that hilarious, but I was terrified. It was only by a miracle that no dog was hurt that day, and, for, and, the, and the forever changed landscape reminds me of that. That was the perfect solution we were looking for, though. I just had to find a way to fire it safely in the future. Next time I tried, fi next time I tried firing it up, which caused a peculiar effect. The dogs told me that once it reached a certain altitude, the energy burst over the sky, burst over the sky and exploded into something inexplicably beautiful. I've never seen the explosion myself. It takes me a long time to reach and leave this room, and each shot creates a huge instability and shelter system that I have to monitor. However, the dogs loved the explosion so much that they started asking me when the next one was planned. They started celebrating it as skies ablaze, and it became a part of their culture. Wish I could see that. Take me Water time. Ugh. The turret uses extremely heavy shells to absorb mana. At first, it took us roughly half a year to fully charge one shell. However, Shelter's population keeps growing. That shortens the time between each skies ablaze. We're in the third quarter of the current year, and it's already our second shell. It's a lot of work to set everything up each time, but it has to be done, and it keeps everyone happy. One day, we may run out of shells to load the turret with, but this situation is still a blessing. It gives us more time to investigate Shelter and look for new solutions. Everyone works hard to keep our home free and open. Now's the time to do my part. I have to make sure that everything is ready for tonight. Luke. Are you listening, Luke? Huh? I open my eyes and find myself back in my tavern. The dark sky shines with so colorful stars. It contrasts, it contrasts so beautifully with pure white snow. Burry, wasn't I? It's about to shoot. Don't take your eyes off the sky. Huh? Who's handling the turret? I should be there and... Don't worry about that. Max has everything under control. He wants you to take a break for once. Don't you want to be here with me? Burry puts his hand on mine and holds it gently. It's soft and warm, just like I remember. Like the time Burry saved me those years ago. Of course I do. I sit and look at the sky with him quietly. We don't need to exchange words, just being with him makes me feel comfortable. I lean and rest my head against his shoulder. He, in turn, gives my hand a gentle squeeze. Right now, there isn't any other place I would rather be. Thank you for being here. Ever since the day we first met, you always stood by my side and supported me. I couldn't do any of this without you. 
I could feel Barry's big fluffy tail brushing my butt as it wagged. I love that he's usually so stoic, but he isn't afraid to, sh to show joy. Burry, what's going to happen now? It's been so peaceful for so long. Each of you have your new have your own new lives now. You needed me to handle shelter, but if Max can use the relics, what's my purpose here now? Second, y'all. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.